Let's continue our discussion of IC voltage regulators. So let's say we're working on a project in the lab and we want to have a certain regulated voltage. Let's say for instance, maybe seven volts. And for whatever reason, let's say we don't have available to us a voltage regulator, an IC voltage regulator that can output a regulated seven volt value. So how do we get around that? And so that's an important thing to be able to do because we can't always find IC voltage regulators for our desired voltage. So let's say, what if we want a regulated output? And so our output, we'll just call V out. And let's say it's different from V out provided by the IC available. So what do we do in that situation? So if we find ourselves in that situation, we can actually make a circuit sort of around this IC regulator that will accomplish the job. So let's say we have some IC regulator which is designed to output some regulated output voltage V reg. So maybe that's our seven volts that we were looking for. So again, remember this is a three terminal device. So on our pin one or terminal one, we're gonna have our input. So this is going to be our unregulated V raw. And so just like we talked about before with our linear voltage regulators, this V raw is gonna to have to be a high enough value to power our circuit. Um, we're also gonna have pin two, which is our ground pin. Um, an important thing to note is that there is some current that's going to be flowing into this pin two to power the device. We'll mention again why that's important a little later on. And then we have our pin three. Oops, don't wanna erase that. We have our pin three, which is going to be our output. So this is ideally, Oh, well, so this is going to be our regulated output. So regulated V out. And so if we just have it set up like this, we connect our input to V raw, we connect two to ground, and we connect V out to whatever our load is, then we would have whatever this V reg specified for the IC is. So how do we change that to be a different value? Um, so say, it's, say we have, for example, an IC that's meant to regulate provide a regulated output of 12 volts, but we wanna find that regulated output of seven volts. And so we can do that by connecting a voltage divider network over here. So we're gonna connect our resistor R1 and a resistor R2 between our output and ground. And so we're gonna connect this terminal two, stop erasing stuff here. Uh, we're gonna connect terminal two between the two now, in order for this terminal two to still be connected to AC ground, what we're gonna to wanna to do is connect a capacitor in series with this lower resistor, and that's gonna maintain that pin two at AC ground. So let me go ahead and label some of these components. Let's say we have R1, R2, and capacitor C. Okay, so if we have it set up like this, because our pin two is still at AC ground, this voltage across R1 is going to be our V reg, whatever the IC is designed to output. And then the combination of the voltage across R1 and R2 is going to be our output voltage, V out. So in that way, we can change this, felt, this, this output voltage by creating this simple voltage divider. So let me just make a note of a couple of things here explicitly that I just mentioned. So this bypass capacitor is keeping our pin two at AC ground. And so why do we wanna do that? Well, it's gonna help some of the other properties of our IC, so it's gonna help preserve our ripple rejection functions. We didn't really talk about that too much, um, but basically it's just gonna help it operate as intended. So it's helping that ripple rejection function of the IC. Okay, so one other thing is typically we're going to want to minimize the amount of current flowing through this voltage divider network. There's no hard rule, but sort of as a general rule, we can say we want it to be about 5% of our load current, less than about 5%. So want to minimize our current in the voltage divider.
And let's say as a general rule, we want that to be about approximately less than 5% of our load current. And so we can say our load current IL is shown right here. And so this is where we also have to keep in mind that some of our current is flowing into pin two. So keep in mind current flows into pin two, and that's the ground pin to the IC. So if we come up here in a different color, we'd say we are actually gonna have some current flowing into here just as part of operating the IC. So we need to consider that when we're considering how much current is drawn away from IL into this voltage divider, because of course some of it is going straight down through here, but some is also branching off to go into the IC. Okay, so with all that in mind, let's look at a very simple example in terms of how we would actually design this circuit. So let's say that we want 10 volts regulated. So want 10 volts regulated from an IC voltage regulator which is spec for five volts regulated output. And so what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna use this circuit configuration, but we wanna find values for our R1 and R2, okay? So basically all we have to do is come up here and look at this, this um, circuit configuration and we say, well, we know that that V reg is going to be five and we want our V out to be 10. Well, we can say 10, which is the voltage across both resistors. So if we look at just the voltage across one, that's voltage across both, which is 10 times R1 plus R1, sorry, divided by R1 plus R2, and we know that's going to be equal to five. So we can rearrange that and we can say this is equal to, so R1 is equal to 0.5 times R1 plus R2. And then we have, we subtract our 0.5 R1 over. So we have 0.5 R1 equals 0.5 R2. And then of course we can simplify that to just say R1 equals R2, which is kind of intuitive if we're wanting to sort of have half of that overall output be our V reg, the two resistor values should be equal such that the output is split across R1 and R2. Okay, so in this particular case, we, we don't know exactly what value we need to choose, but we would want to choose these to be relatively large. So relatively large. And so by relatively large, typically that's going to be at least tens of K ohms, if not higher. And so the reason we wanna do that is to minimize, again, minimize that current in our voltage divider network. And in this case, we would need more info on what our load was. So if we knew more info about our load current, we could say, okay, well, we wanna keep that at roughly 5% of our load current. So let's make the resistors this big so that our current is this small. We would also need to know how much current is going into our terminal two here in order to fully understand that. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, that's going to end our discussion on our linear voltage regulators. And in subsequent videos, we're going to switch our attention to switching power supplies.